you've had to go through the past couple of years, how much you just enjoying coaching a group like this and the mold that they're in? Well, I, I said from the beginning, and I think you know we we talked about it in the recruiting process, and and we talked about it with the returning guys, but. The, the, the truth of the matter, this guy sitting here, and to a large degree, Gary Brown, have done a terrific job of of um, setting an example of what it is to play at West Virginia and be successful. So they deserve a ton of credit, but we have bought in, and they're fun. I mean, th that this group here is, they let you coach them, you know? I mean, I can get on their butt pretty good, and they, you know, they respond to it, uh, don't take anything personal, and they show up every day pretty much with great enthusiasm. And the people in, that I enjoy being around are people that are enthusiastic and have fun and enjoy doing what they're doing. And these, this group does. Their second team in a row looks like they're trying to attack the press when they get across by moving a quick, taking quick threes when they're open. Does that change the way you've got to recover? I mean, normally, you know, when the ball gets passed, you sprint back inside and play out. Well, we tweak we tweak things from on a game to game basis, but I mean, the the core of what we do never changes. The core of what we do is get off the help. We have great ball pressure. Get off the help. Don't get a straight line passes, and it it evolves from there. But yeah, we do tweak things when they try to attack it differently, but. It's just a tweak. It's not. It's not a radical change. Hey, Juwan. Tonight we were the, the going got tough. You decided to take, to take over the game. Tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, what was your thoughts on this during the game? <clears throat> um, well, we have a lot of first year players. You know, uh, JUCO guys and and freshmen. So, um, with me being a senior and, and the role that I have on this team as a captain, you know, I just had to step up and. You know, kind of take the shots when they were there and just try to make plays. Coach, you were talking the other day that you were beginning to see this team starting to run better at half court offense. When NC State, I think it was 57, 56, they cut it to one. The results of you guys running better offense, was that the difference at that point? And how you guys, you know, got it back up to 10? Well, Wani made some big shots. I mean, half court offense, let's be honest. I mean, half court offense. Uh, means you make some shots, you know, and I think if, if you watched any basketball today, there's guys who are really, really good coaches. The teams went eight, nine minutes and didn't score today. And, and that's because the shots don't go in. But I think, you know, I have and I think our guys have a lot of confidence in, in, in Wani. He's, you know, he made huge shots for us. But Devin, Devin scored about, well, only probably three trips in a row. Devin scored. We've been trying to get Devin to attack people a little bit better, and, and we, we were able to get him spread to where he was a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, but he made some huge shots for us. <coughs> How close were you to pulling the cord on What do you mean? Not letting him shoot. No, Dave, I, you know, I watch him shoot it a, 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 all the time in practice, and if if we're going to make a serious run, he needs to make those shots. You know, he if if, uh, if he'll make those shots, and and I think Jay Sean Page just showed he can make them, and and um, Tariq hit a big one for us today. But J, uh, Javon hit shots for us, and Dax can hit shots. Well, we can spread people then and let Wani do what he does. Uh, and and Wani made you know two great finds, and obviously he had he had some confidence in John. But we watch him every day. It's not like he can't shoot. Yeah, I think he gets he gets anxious. He gets in a hurry. He just goes a little too fast. But he's very capable. I mean, he's had days probably when he didn't miss one. Uh, but it just hadn't transferred over to the game yet. Anything else? There were about six or seven <coughs> trips where there was a foul somewhere in West Virginia. Does, when that happens, does that affect mentally? The intensity that you're first playing defense with, or do you just have to, you know, put that behind you and keep playing the same way? Well, we just try to put it behind us. You know, most of the fouls we get are, you know, fouls that we can prevent. So, um, there are a lot of tic tac fouls. So when we get start getting those fouls, we just try to regroup. Um, we stay on each other, let each other know, keep our hands off, and just play defense. And that's the best way to go about it.
Coach, is there ever a point where you, when that's happening, that you're thinking about dropping out of it for a trip or two? No. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna pull out of it. We we kind of did a little bit today just because, you know, did you you may try to manage time and score, and and so it was better for us to manage time and score where we tried to keep them in front of us rather than to try to make plays. But no, no, we're gonna we're gonna play. We're we we've, we've made a commitment to playing that way. Uh, I think we all, players, coaches, everybody agrees that's what we have to do to to. Uh, uh, optimize our abilities, you know, and it took a little bit. It took a little bit, I think, a little adjusting too. But I mean, one, he played 36 minutes a day and played hard. I think he played hard. I, that, I thought defensively he played as hard uh, today as he's played all year. You know, so it, I think a lot of it is a matter of getting in shape, and we're going to have opportunities where we can we can rest him a little bit more than what we did today. <coughs> But four, he rest in four minutes is four more than he got to rest last year. So. Uh huh.